so this is going to be part two. But wait, there's uh, something very interesting that I want you to know and something critical before I go explaining the rest of the evidence. Is that there? I really want to address this. Vitamin K2 has the ability to work through a number of mechanisms that I have gone in my or into my, in my overview. But there are no clinical trials of vitamin K2 in Alzheimer's disease. This is very interesting because vitamin K2 has been researched on topics such as osteoporosis and cardiovascular disease. But out of the 121 clinical trials of vitamin K2, there are none that explore the connection between vitamin K2 and Alzheimer's. Vitamin K2 seems to be extremely interesting due to all of these mechanisms. But this is just something I want you to keep in mind when I present the evidence for how the different ways these mechanisms work. So first of all, I'm going to go over the first way that the researchers have found that vitamin K2 helps to prevent uh, Alzheimer's disease. So to begin with, this A-beta or beta amyloid. So the death of neurons in Alzheimer's disease is mediated through beta amyloid, which is abbreviated as AB or a beta it does this uh, increasing it does this through increasing apoptosis which is the suicide of the cells uh, in the neurons and then it also does this by being toxic to the cells directly toxic so in rat neuron cells uh, the researchers found that vitamin k2 prevented death of neurons due to the directly toxic effects of beta amyloid Furthermore, the researchers also tested apoptosis, which is the suicide of the cell, and the cells that were treated with vitamin K2 in a beta amyloid rat model had less apoptosis. It also decreased the amount of reactive oxygen species created. Remember, this was kind of the gunk that's hard to remove and is hard in the body, and also helped to increase the levels of glutathione, which is the body's natural antioxidant, and helps to remove reactive oxygen species. Furthermore, there's an additional mechanism. In my previous video, I mentioned that vitamin K2's main benefit is to help the carboxylation of two proteins, matrix GL1 alpha protein and osteocalcin, after they have been made in an uncarboxylated form by vitamin D. There is another protein activated by vitamin K2, which is known as GAS6. GAS6 is widely found in the nervous system, such as the brain and spinal cord, and helps to control the inflammation in the brain and spinal cord. So now there was another study in which baby rat cells were treated with vitamin K2, and the increased GAS6 brought about by vitamin K2 helped prevent calcium from going inside the cell in a dose-dependent manner and preventing the damage that beta amyloid did on the DNA in these cells. So what does it mean to be dose dependent? Dose dependent means that as there was more gas six, uh, because there was more vitamin K2, more vitamin K2 led to more gas six, which led to less, D, uh, less calcium going inside the cell and helped to reduce this damage that beta amyloid caused on the DNA this DNA fragmentation caused by the beta amyloid. So now let's go into the second mechanism. So the second mechanism is with vitamin K2 and neuroinflammation. So the mechanism of neuroinflammation in Alzheimer's disease is the elevation in chronic glial activation. What are glia? Glia are kind of the support cells for neuron, and two of them are astrocytes and microglia. Astrocytes and microglia are normally neuroprotective and help in the clearing of beta amyloid, but if they are activated too much and too often, this can cause neurodegeneration and death of neurons. Imagine if you're constantly in an inflammatory state, if you're constantly in the state of, say, fight or flight, then of course this would lead to damage over time. This is because when these glia are activated, they initiate reactions that lead to releasing inflammatory cytokines, which are hormones of the immune system. Think of it that way. These hormones include TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, 
IL-1 beta, interleukin-1 beta, and IL-6, interleukin-6, which are ultimately uh, which ultimately promotes a state of neuroinflammation inside the brain. When this state of inflammation is invoked too much and too often, this can lead to a loss of connections in the neurons to other neurons and the death of the neuron itself. So the researchers made this very nice diagram that helped to il illustrate this concept. So as you can see, these are the resting glia. Uh, astrocytes and mi microglial cells and there are five different ways of say activating these glial cells so you can have oxidative stress chronic viral infections lps lps stands for lipopolysaccharide and it's found on gram negative bacteria so uh, with gram negative bacteria they have lps basically on the outside of their cell wall and a beta, this is the beta amyloid from before and also injury so if you have any of these five, this leads to effects on the resting glia, which helps to activate the glial cell. Now, the byproduct of having the activated glial cell is that it leads to a pro-inflammatory response. Pro just means like it increases inflammation. So pro is upwards, upwards inflammation, uh, pro-inflammatory response, upward inflammatory. And the cytokines released are IL-1, interleukin-1, TNF-alpha, or tumor necrosis factor alpha, and IL-6. These are just hormones of the immune system, and they basically have a bunch of effects downstream to help to increase inflammation. And so this leads to effect on the neuron, which ultimately leads to neuronal death. So how does vitamin K2 affect all this? So uh, the researchers with MK4, they found that it decreased the microglial activation in mouse microglial cells. It also led to the inhibition of inflammation by reducing the production of IL-1 beta, TNF-alpha, and IL-6. So the researchers also found evidence that when they exposed the rat brain cells to stress, such as low oxygen. Now, remember in the pre prior figure that I just showed, oxidative stress was one of the things that could lead to glial activation. When, when cells are exposed to low oxygen and then pre and pre treated with vitamin K2 is MK7, it was found the glial activation was decreased by reducing the inflammatory cytokines IL-1-beta, TNF-alpha, and IL-6. So just going back to this figure again, so oxidative stress was one of the things that helps kickstart this cascade. So vitamin uh, oxidative stress, so they wanted to induce a state of activation through the slow oxygen conditions. And they found that by pre-treating with vitamin K2, this helped to reduce the inflammatory response by reducing the cytokines, IL-1-beta, TNF-alpha, and IL-6. If you have less of the inflammatory cytokines, then this leads to decreased inflammation. So what does this all mean? This means that this evidence helps to suggest that vitamin K2 reduces the glial activation, which is one of the ways that Alzheimer's disease is believed to be brought about. So this is the conclusion of part two. Look forward to part three.